How many happy for the victory? I'm happy about it. I can't serve a God that I'm not on. I'm on the winning tie. Anybody into March Madness? You know, I, I stopped doing brackets because they made me not be saved. But the problem with the brackets was you never knew. You ne Anything can happen, right? Your favorite team could be booted at any moment, right? Anybody had that happen? But with our God, it's, a, it's always a victory. We've already triumphed. The battle is already ours. It's already won. I don't know if anybody else is happy about that, but I'm happy that I'm on a winning team. I already got my rings. I already won the ship. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, we're grateful for you to be here on this day, even virtually. Thank you for joining us online. Thank you for those who are person. Um, so happy for uh, the word that is coming from our lectionary passage, and it's a familiar verse. I'm sure you've heard this passage growing up from your grandma and them, from your, from your big mamas, from any funeral you've been to, anything. This might be a, a, a verse that you grew up um, memorizing in Sunday school. Anybody remember Sunday school? Those were the good old days, huh? Sunday school. But it's a familiar passage, but I believe that the Lord wants to uh, impart something into us today. Amen. So it's a familiar verse, and I'm reading from Psalm 23. Psalm 23. It's an oldie but a goodie. Yeah. And um, if, it, if it's coming on the screen, if not, you could uh, turn to your... Oh, there it is. It's real bright. I'm shining like the sun up here. Yo, we gonna need some glasses. <laughs> How I look online, I probably can't even see me, huh? I'm sorry, y'all. All right, Psalms 23, verse 1 could preach all by itself. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We could just stop right there. Thank you for coming. God bless you. But verse 2 says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still water. Verse 3, he restores my soul. He leads me in paths, in right paths, I'm sorry, for his name's sake. Verse 4, I'm glad about this one. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear what? No evil. Why? Because you are with me, your rod and staff, they comfort me. May God add a blessing to God's holy word. Can all the people of God say amen? amen. Our subject today is shepherd me. Shepherd me. Can you just say that and just say, Lord, shepherd me. Shepherd me. Shepherd me. Yeah, <laughs> dim the light, Lord. <laughs> Nashari, you can turn that off and just let it be a blank, uh, go back to a, re a regular background. I don't know how you feel about it, but in the Bible, we are often called sheep. There's many references to us as people being referred to as sheep. I don't know how y'all feel about that. I don't know if that's endearing, like cute little lambs, little, little precious ones, cute little lambs of God, or is that insulting? Because sheep aren't the the sharpest knives in the, in the kitchen drawer. Sheep aren't the sharpest crayons all the time in the animal world. So I don't know. I don't know if that's an, an insult or if that's endearing because nobody really wants to be considered sheepish. I mean, if someone was, were to describe you as sheepish, you would be like, what you mean by that? What you trying to say, right? We, nobody wants to be called sheepish, like that like we're timid or we just, you know, we're, you know we're, we're, we're really shy and can't really speak up for ourselves. But because in this Western culture, we are formed to be what? Strong, independent. I can stand on my own two feet, pave my own road, pull myself up by said bootstraps and just go. I could be my own person. That's what we take strength and pride in. But yet the Bible says in Psalm 100, it's a familiar passage. 
It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. And this is the part. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. That's what the Bible says. Over in the Bible, um, the sheep are mentioned more than 500 times throughout the scripture. More than any other animal. I'm talking about sheep. And I researched some sheep facts. I got caught up in the wormhole on the internet and YouTube, and I had to bring myself out because I'm now a certified farmer. No, just kidding. No. <laughs> I had to pull myself out of the sheep land because I, it was too much. But I found some interesting facts about sheep that when I think about it, I can see how, well, maybe we are a little sheepy. Maybe I get myself in a little, some sheepy situations. Come on, you ever been in a sheepy situation? You might not know what I'm talking about, but when I've gone through this list, you're going to be like, mm, that could be me. <laughs> These are what I learned about sheep. They are emotionally complex animals. I did not know this. Uh, one of the most important factors for sheep is to be with their herd. And straying away from the flock causes them great stress. When sheep experience stress or isolation, they show signs of depression. Similar to humans by hanging their heads and, you know, avoiding positive actions. These sheep, I did not know, are able to experience emotions. Did not know this, such as fear, anger, rage, despair, boredom, disgust, or happiness. Who knew? That sheep are so emotionally connected. The other thing I learned about sheep, you might already know about this, sheep have no sense of direction and are prone, <laughs> and are prone to wonder. I got an amen over here. You're already feeling some sheepiness happening. Sheep have no sense of direction. Once they see some grass, they put their heads down, and they'll just keep on eating and walking and eating and walking how many people have become fixated on one thing and you put your head down and you just walk with no sense of direction if it felt good i'm just gonna follow it if i'm just doing uh, hey, this is where everybody going i'm just gonna go this is amazing because they will eat and eat with their heads down and many have been known to just fall off a cliff because they never even look up to see where they're going. They're just eating along. Sheep have strength in numbers. When one wanders off and is separated from the flock, it becomes an easy target for predators. Easy, easy for the picking. In the same way, I think we, we know better a lot of times, and I'll speak for myself, wind up in all kinds of sheepy situations that God never intended for us. In Isaiah, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray. How many of us? All of us are like sheep and we have gone astray and we have left God's paths to follow our own. God is the one who brings us back to, shape, to, to safety. We get a little sheepy sometimes. Somebody say sheepy. We, we prone to wander. Sheep are also defenseless. Think about this. They aren't the smartest creatures, I already told you that. But they also have no natural defense mechanisms. Think about this. They rely on their shepherd to keep them out of harm's way and to rescue them if they get into trouble. They don't have like fangs or, you know, sharp claws or they don't have an instinct to, they don't fight back. They're defenseless, they're, they're little sheepy, defenseless. No one ever has a sheep for a mascot. Like, go sheep. Like, there's nothing that no one wants to, except for rams. Like, rams are adult sheep in some situations, because I know my science teachers were got to give me an eye. Um, but there are some breeds of sheep that are, don't develop into rams, and they don't have the horns. So there it is. <laughs> I already felt that. I already felt it coming. <laughs> they are defenseless. When they run out and get isolated and alone, there is nothing a sheep can do to protect itself from a wolf, 
from a coyote, from a lion or a bear. They are the super defensive, defenseless. I feel like I've been a sheep. Another thing is, this is so interesting. Sheep can't get up without help, my God. It's a thing that happens to sheep if they get turned over on their back. It's called being cast. And the sheep, I had a picture for you, but I will blind you, so I ain't going to put it up there no more. We ain't going to leave them alone. But if a sheep gets turned over on its back, there's no way for it to get itself up. The poor little thing is just going to be there just flailing its little legs in the air, open to predators, easy to get left from the flock. The only way that they can get up is if the shepherd comes and turns them around. Sheep are totally, they can't make it up on their own. The other thing that I found was interesting are that sheep were not meant to carry burdens. You ever see a sheep with a little, little uh, satchel, a little saddle on them? Little, like, llama, little camels or llamas or anything? You don't see sheep carry nothing. They're not bringing nothing to the table. They're not helping with nothing, right? Sheep were not meant to carry burdens. Isn't that something? They were never meant to do that. They're never meant to carry a heavy load. They will be crushed under such a weighty load. Come on here. All we are like sheep. This is the last fact, and I, because I, I, I could go on. I learned a lot about sheep, but I'm going to stop at this one. Sheep will often settle for less. They'll settle for less. When sheep are thirsty, they will stop at dirty puddles right in front of them instead of going for clean, still waters that might be 20 feet ahead of them. They'll just stop, take a drink. They don't, they don't even have the foresight to know that there's something better coming. There's something better just around the horizon. No, I'll just stay right here and just drink the little muddy water. So with all that being said, the question remains, what type of sheep are you? What type of sheep are you? Are you a lone sheep? The sheep that try to thug it out by themselves? The one that just try to go out there and make it on their own? You know that's counter to the nature of a sheep. No sheep can make it out there on their own. There's no sheep that can leave the pen and be like, you know what, I'm just going to go out here and find my own. They're not even made for that. There's no such thing as a lone sheep. Think about this. Are you shepherdable? I might have made that word up. If you say shepherdable three times, you almost on your way to speaking in tongues. Come on. You almost there. All we got to do is turn you up here and call Jesus on you. G, G, G. G, G, G. <laughs> you almost there. Are you shepherdable? This is the question. Are you able to be shepherded? What kind of sheep are you? Are you out here just kind of do your own thing? Or will you declare, as in Psalms 23, as David declared, the Lord is my shepherd. That verse is pow it's so much, it's so loaded. This was because David knew about this life. David was a shepherd himself. So he knew about the shepherd life. Like, this is what I do. I, I, do, I does this every day. And then when I look at who God is to me, I've got to compare God as a shepherd. For, because of all the things God does for me, the Lord is my shepherd. Let me give you a, a little clue. God can't be your shepherd if he's not your Lord. You don't allow anybody to shepherd you that you don't revere as Lord, as your boss, as the one who can tell you what to do, as the one who can speak into your life, as the one who will give you direction. If you haven't even tapped into Jesus or God being your Lord, how are you going to be shepherded? And hey, we going this way. No, I want to go this way. 
That's how we, that's how the kind of sheep we are. Hey, but there's green pasture over here, but it looked fun over there. What kind of sheep are you? I love when Jesus stepped on the scene in the new covenant. David had already written this in the Old Testament. But Jesus arrives on the scene, and among many things, among his seven I am statements, Jesus so eloquently told everybody, hey, everybody, listen up. I am the good shepherd. This is what he said in John 10. Hey, you know, you want to know who I am? You want to know what I'm like? I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. If you were to ever read in your spare time, read John 10. It's so amazing. Not only did he say, I'm the good shepherd, he's like, I'm the door to the sheep. Let me just tell you who I am. I'm, a, I'm the good shepherd. And I'm the thing that the sheep come in and out of. I'm the thing where the sheep find safety in. I'm the door. There's no other way to come through but through me. Jesus is a cold piece, boy. He's going to be both at the same time. And then not only that, he said, not only that, I am also the shepherd that will leave everything to go after the one. To go after the one lost one. Have you ever been the one lost one? Have you ever been grateful that God will go out his way and leave everybody else and come find you? Has God ever met you in an encounter, in a vision or a dream, or somebody came to talk to you and gave you a word? Somebody came to turn your life around just because God was like, I'm not going to leave you. He's a good shepherd. I'm happy about it. Now, when he says, I'm the good shepherd, it automatically applies, implies that they are bad shepherds. If Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, it implies that there are some bad shepherds out there. If you were to read John 10, 10, John 10, the whole chapter, he talks about the hireling, people who don't really care about the sheep. They just show up to get money, and then they out. Or it implies that we're the bad shepherd. That we, have, we do a bad job of shepherding our own lives. If anybody is a witness with me, I do a bad job of shepherding my own life. I think I, this is going to be great over here. and No, it's wrong. I'm falling off a cliff, right? Sheep can't lead them own selves. We need a shepherd. We need a shepherd. Do y'all hear me? We need a shepherd. And this is why we need to be tended to. We need to be tended to. And I believe this is the word for today. I believe that Jesus is speaking to each one of us, both here and online. Jesus is saying, will you let me tend to you? Will you allow me to tend to you? Will you allow me to be God in your life? Will you allow me to be shepherd? Will you allow me to be the thing that I want to be to you? What is that? He's the good shepherd. Let me just tell you really quickly four things that a good shepherd does. Again, I would show you, but I would blind you, so we ain't, we just going to have to listen this time. The good shepherd, what does the good shepherd do? Number one, the good shepherd helps, or should I say, yeah, helps with provision. But I would rather say the good shepherd is provision. Because the verse, the first verse says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. Think about that. If the Lord is our shepherd, that's a, that's a big, that's a big ask. I don't want there's nothing I want. I'm not, aside from needs, there's nothing that I want. This is amazing because that means every provision is taken care of. Just think if you're the sheep, you don't have to worry about when, now this is, like, when are we eating, what are we eating, what pasture are we going to, what's the itinerary today, shepherd? What are we doing here? Because this is what I feel like God is talking about when he says the childlike faith. There's something that is so cute about kids when they're only about two or three, maybe four. After that, I don't know what happens to them. But there is something when they're really little and cute where if you just put them in the car, they're just happy to be in the car. They're not concerned about what we're doing or where we're going. They know they're going to eat. 
They know they're going to be safe. They're going to have food. They're going to they're have clothes on. They're going to have shoes. There's nothing. You, do you remember what it feels like to just be childlike and just be, I don't know where we go. Where are you going? I don't know. What are we going to do? I don't know. It's going to be fun. What you going to do when you get there? I, what's gonna be, I, what you going to eat? I don't know. They're going to buy it. You remember that feeling? Like, I'm just here for the, tr- for the trip. I took a group of uh, seventh graders. I helped chaperone. Uh, Miss P- Miss Patton was with me. We we chaperoned a group of kids to the museum, the Oakland Museum. Y'all should y'all should have said a prayer for us. But we were we were we were chaperones for a field trip of seventh graders, the whole school of seventh graders, at the Oakland Museum. Yeah. Um. And 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 the the thing that kept in uh, striking me was so with the seventh graders. How much they wanted to, they needed the details of the itinerary of the trip. And I'm like, y'all, just come and enjoy the trip. How much are the tickets? You don't need to worry about it. What we doing next? Just enjoy. How long will we be on this floor? Who knows? What are we doing after this? What time are we leaving? Do you know what time? Where, Where the food we going to? What's the restaurant? They had so many questions. And I'm like, y'all, everything's provided for. Just enjoy the trip. Walk around, look at the art, enjoy yourself, right? And a lot of us do that in our lives with God. We do that with God. God, I need to know a detailed itinerary of my life. What are we doing next year? Three years from now, five years from now, what's the plan? Who, what, when, where? How and why? Come on, I love having teachers in here. But it's child life. Eh? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. What would it be like to live in that posture? Not that we don't do our due diligence and put, put our, you know, do what we need to do on our end, but that you can live knowing the shepherd's got it covered. What do what, what I need? Oh, we need this? Oh, he's got it covered. He's everything. I, he's he's t- it's going to be taken care of. When I get there, I don't know. How's it going? But it's going to be covered because the shepherd is good. The shepherd's going to take care of me. The shepherd's going to give me everything I need. Everything is already taken. Come on. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The shepherd takes care of all the provisions. Number two, the shepherd helps with our spiritual needs, our spiritual needs. The verse says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. This verse right here, he makes me. It wasn't a say, oh, I don't know, they're not ready. The, we take it off. I did, it was too much. I blinded the saints, Mike. We just take it off. <laughs> they need suntan lotion to watch that. He makes me lie down. It wasn't a suggestion. The Lord didn't, didn't make a like, hey, do you want to lay down, buddy? Hey, you want to feel like taking a little nap? Has anyone been in a situation where the Lord has made you lie down? He's made you. Now, you done did, you done, you done did all the things. Now it's time to sit on down. He makes me lie down. I don't know. I don't, I don't always want to live in that where God is, has to always make me do, make me get rest, make me sit down, make me be quiet, make me slow down. But there are situations in our life where the Lord will make you lay down for your own good. Take a moment. And I love it. He don't just put you anywhere. He puts you in green pastures. So everything you were worried about, how am I going to eat? What's the provision? What I'm going to do? Is it going to be covered? Am I going to have enough money when I get there? Hey, I'm I'm just going to make you just lie down and rest. Come on, coming from a place of rest, from a place of Sabbath, I will make you lay down in green pastures, in your provisional place, in the place where everything is covered. You don't have to worry about a thing. I've already covered it makes you lay down. This is our spiritual needs. And I love that it says, he restores my soul. That speaks that my soul has been raggedy. That soul has been toe up. 
That soul has been, you know, the soul is the, is the, the personality part of you. The soul is where your thoughts, emotions, and feelings are. You know, have you ever had your soul worn down? Like, you ever been tired in your soul? Not just, and you could get a lot, you could have a whole day and sleep all day, but your soul is still tired. This is what the shepherd's job is. The shepherd wants to tend to your soul. He will restore it, which means he will return life or vitality to it. How many people need their soul restored? Say, God, restore it. Restore my soul. Fix it. Put it back together again. Give me new life. Breathe it back into the, the very core of me. That's where Jesus, he's not doing the superficial things, the outward. He wants to get down into the inner you, the real you, and restore you. He also will help with our directional needs. Come on, those who are, are wondering what's next. What do I do? Which way to go? Which job to take? Who should I love? Who should I marry? What All the things. This is what the shepherd provides. It says that he leads me beside still waters. He leads. He leads. I don't get to lead. He will lead me beside still waters. You got to notice about sheep. They're scared of of. Yeah, scared of everything, <laughs> but they're scared of uh, water, like water that's really fast moving. They're scared of fast water. You move them to a river and it's doing too much, they'd be like, no, nah, go ahead. Y'all go ahead, right? They'll go to. So they don't want to be around fast moving water, one, because it's a lot. Two, if they have a lot of wool on them, they will get waterlogged and could drown in the water. So it's so interesting that the Lord will lead me beside still waters. Waters that are not troubled. Water where there's not a lot of things going on. Things that are not disruptive. All the scary things. Things that cause me fear. God was like, don't worry, I'll lead you beside still waters. I'm sensing a, a theme of peace. Anybody who needs peace, just reach up and get that. I'm sensing peace. I'm sensing stillness. I'm sensing God is leading you to a place of quiet and calm. This is what the shepherd does. It also leads me in paths of righteousness. Paths of righteousness. He leads me in paths of righteousness, which speaks that we've been on a lot of foolish paths. Paths that didn't, wasn't all that. We went down some paths that we should have stayed off of. And I'm, I'm along by myself. Anybody? Okay, y'all was about to leave me. Okay, I see how y'all be doing. Yeah, I've been on the wrong path before, but it says that we are like sheep who are prone, prone to wander and become lost. These sheep need guidance. So God acts as our GPS system. God leads us along right paths through his word and his spirit. This is what God does. He reroutes us even when we become wayward. How many glad about it? And why does he do it? He does it for his namesake. Because you belong to him. You've been branded. I'm going to do this because you belong to me. You're a part of my fold. I'm going to come get you. I'm going to lead you because you belong to me. And that your life will bring, you, will bring God glory. The last thing I'll say is that the shepherd helps us not only with these wonderful things, our provision, our spiritual needs, our directional needs, but the shepherd also helps us with our emotional needs. Come on, somebody breathe that in. God will help me with my emotional needs. Look at this wonderful shepherd. It says, yea, do I walk through the darkest valleys. The valley of the shadow of death was an idiom, and it meant that it's a dark place. It's a dark place. I know we have all know what it's like to walk through a dark place. A dark place in your heart, in your soul, in your mind. This is the place where the shepherd wants to meet you. A sheep, a sheep's sense of vision is so poor in the dark and in the shadows. That's why they prefer bright and open spaces. But the shepherd will help you walk through dark times. Will lead you even when it's scary, even when it's dark. Can you just see the image of a shepherd saying this way, come on, I got you, I'm right here. Through your darkest time, this is good news for someone who didn't know how they were going to make it. 
didn't know how you were going to make it through that dark season, I want you to know that there is hope on the other side of that. Why? Only because you have a shepherd. You can't make it through this dark valley by yourself. We can't lead ourselves. We need a shepherd. So, God, I, and I, I love the also where it says, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Check it out. Jesus is not just coming. Jesus got a little toolkit on him. And it says, his rod and a staff, they comfort me. A rod and a staff. A rod and a staff. He provides comfort with his rod because he uses it to beat off wild animals that come to attack the sheep. Come on here, rod. So if you got things in your life, you got principalities in your life, things that are coming against you in the spirit, this is why you need a shepherd. You can't fight. Remember, you a sheep, boo. You can't fight. You What you going to fight? Why, what you fighting demons with, boo? What you, you ain't even equipped. You got no teeth. You got no claw. You ain't got, you are helpless against the enemy, but you got a shepherd who has a rod and not afraid to use it. Get up off my sheep. Get up off my child. Get up, not today. You better lean into this shepherd. See, you've been trying to fight your own battles. You've been trying to bleat. Blah. That ain't scared nobody. You ever have a, a sheep with a sheep? If a sheep came in bl and, and bled at you, what's that? What they call bleed it? They bleat? I would be like, oh, get on, little, little, get on, little self. That's how we look in the spirit. Just bad ban at a demon. You better get with the shepherd. Get behind the shepherd who will use a rod, who will stand up for you, who will defend you. Stop trying to fight this battle on your own. We are sheep. And he uses his staff. The staff is what he would do to pull them back from harm. Y'all remember Apollo? They come and snatch you off. This is what Jesus will do to you. You get too far. No, no, no. Anybody ever been in a situation where, how come I can't do what everybody else doing? How come everybody else get away with it and I don't? How come I always get caught? How come I'm always the one that's on the, on the outskirts? That is the rod and the staff of God pulling you back out of situations where you, no, 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 this far, no further. Come on back. You belong to me. Hallelujah. So here's both a question and an invitation. Will you allow the shepherd to shepherd you? Will you allow him to shepherd you? This is a very important question. What kind of sheep will you be? Because sheep need to be tended to. I want you to please walk away with this. Sheep need to be tended to. I did have one picture. Put your, put your glasses on. I want to show the, uh, the picture of the, 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 the sheep with the over, with the, put your, put your 3D glasses on. I want you to see what it looks like when a sheep doesn't get sheared for a long time. All right? What does it look like when a sheep does it, when the sheep needs to be tended to? I think this sheep was found somewhere in a cave, not tended to. Look at him. He got a little before and after picture. Look at him. But this sheep right here cannot operate at his maximum capacity with all that on, with all the weight, with all the cares, with all the being unattended to. You, you're not, you can't run from nothing. You can't do nothing. This is how I feel we look in the spirit, unattended to, because we just want to do our own thing. We don't want God to know. I don't want no, no God. I don't want no correction. I don't want you to tell me what to do. I don't want, I, I'm just out here. And we think we stunting, and this is how you looking. And God's like, will you let me prune you? Thank you, Mike. Will you let me prune you? Will you let me tend to you? Will you let me cut down the things that don't need to be a part of your life? Will you let me trim you down in some areas? Will you let me work on that attitude? Will you let me work on that, your disposition? 
Will you let me just cut back on some things? Let me let you trim down some of that screen time. Let me let you do, because I want you to operate at your optimum, what I created you to be. You can take it down, Mike. I don't think they eyes can handle no more. I want you to hear the heart of God. This is my last verse in Matthew 9. Jesus was looking out on a crowd, and this really touches my heart. Jesus saw he was at a feast, and he looked out over Jerusalem. He looked out over the crowd, and it says in Mark 9, 36, it says he had compassion over them. He's looking at all these people because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Listen to the heart of Jesus. I feel like this is how he looks at us. Looking out at people, having full compassion for them. Look at them. Just harassed, being chased around, helpless, like a sheep without a shepherd. Don't let this be the testimony of your life. Walking around harassed and helpless. Have you, felt, have you been feeling harassed and helpless? Hit it up on all sides. Don't know what to do. Jesus, this is your invitation from God. Will you let me shepherd you? Will you let me be to you what I, what I want to be in your life? But in order to be shepherded, you got to be willing to trust the shepherd. Will you trust the shepherd? Will you trust that God is good and that God loves you and God has a beautiful plan for your life and that whatever way God wants you to go, that's the way God will go? I actually have a song that I want to, mm-hmm, that we go. And um, will you be willing to submit to the shepherd? Remember, sheep don't get to call the shots. Sheep don't get to say, yeah, yeah, I was feeling not this pasture today. I feel like we should go down a few yards to another pasture. I feel like it would be better for us down there. Sheep don't call the shots. They just follow the lead of a shepherd. Come on. If you are to be shepherded, you must be aware of your weaknesses and limits. Self-awareness. Are you aware of who you are as a sheep? I know we want to be strong. It's like, God, why we couldn't be like eagles or like be like, you know, something, a, a peacock, something, something that could have something that we could really look up to. But no, we are sheep. We have weaknesses. We have limits. We can't, there's, there's only so far we come. We are defenseless. We are prone to wander. You got to know this about yourself and you got to be like, see, that's why I need a shepherd. See, that's why I can't do this all by myself. Last thing. If you're going to be shepherded, you got to stay in community. Come on, everybody say community. Online, say community. We have an online community also. If you're going to be a sheep under the shepherd's care, you got to stay together. Sheep stay together. Sheep are in a herd. That's for protection. You ever see a sheep all by itself? It is as is, is good as gone. Whenever we are isolated, whenever we don't put ourselves in community, you are putting yourself in danger. Sheep stay in community. So let's bring this community together. Let's, let's be a community. In this Lenten season, as we're celebrating Lent, in this season, how about we give up trying to shepherd ourselves? Won't that, won't that be one of the things we put on our list? God, I'm not going to do this by myself no more. I want to, I want you to be my shepherd. I don't want to go at it alone. Jesus, I'm going to let you tend to me. Come on, I just have a, a, a brief, we're going to end our time. I have a, a, a song I just want to play. And as the song is playing, I just want you to begin to think about all the ways that you need the shepherd in your life. All the ways that you need God to tend to you. This is such a beautiful concept that Jesus will tend to you. That Jesus will take care of you. That Jesus will, will do all the things that he would do for it. Go ahead. And we'll just stay in this, situ- in this posture for a minute. If you want to come up to the altar, 
If you want to pray, if you want to kneel down, whatever you want to do, let's just take a moment to be in this. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of your spirit that heals and restores, that corrects, oh God, that shepherds us. Lord God, I pray that my neighbor, my loved one who I'm touching, who I am in fellowship with, who I'm next to and behind, I pray that they will be overwhelmed by the power of your shepherding. I pray, God, that you will ward off through the power of your strength every attack of the enemy in their life. I pray, God, that every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of your truth in their life will be defeated in the name of Jesus. I come against negative assumptions about this person. I come against, oh God, the stories they tell themselves that make them believe they're not worthy. I come against, oh God, the attacks that diminish them on their jobs. I come against, oh God, the speech that happens in their homes and with their friends and in relationships that cause them to shrink and believe that they are not worthy to be loved and to be protected and to be saved. Oh God, I come against that in the name of Jesus. And I pray God that you will remind them that they are precious in your sight, that they are the apple of your eye, that there is nothing they can do or say that disqualifies them from being fearfully and wonderfully made. I pray, God, that you will restore to them the joy of their salvation. I pray, God, that you will extend to them peace that passes all understanding. I pray, God, that you will give them the love that comes from you, that springs like a well of living water. I pray, God, that as they walk through the valleys of gloom places, Lord God, that you will remind them that you are with them. May they never feel isolated. Somebody say, we are not alone. May they never feel vulnerable. Say, I am protected. In the name of Jesus, God, we are longing to be shepherded by the good shepherd. So shepherd us, God. Shepherd us, hallelujah, and heal us and restore us and give us what we need in this season. I dare you for about 10 seconds, lift your hands to the Lord as just a sign of surrender. God, I surrender all to you. I surrender all to you, God. Shepherd me. Shepherd my family. Shepherd my relationships. Shepherd my children. Shepherd my vocation. Shepherd, oh God, my imagination. Shepherd, oh God, my illnesses, my sicknesses, my proclivities, my idiosyncrasies. Shepherd me, oh God. I surrender to you in the name of Jesus. And we'll say, thank you, Lord. We'll say, thank you, Lord, for surrendering to the good shepherd, the shepherd that will never lead us astray. And we'll thank you, God, for it in the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus, the good shepherd, we pray. Come on, let's just thank God for being shepherded for a few moments. We thank you.